Let's start uh, with uh, Steve Harmison. It was uh, a wonderful toss to win for, Be for Ben Stokes. It was something that uh, both captains desperately wanted to do, to, uh, to, to bat first and make use, best use of uh, the, the best batting conditions of the test match. Um, and England made a really good start, but that was against the seamers. The game was transformed and the spinners came came on and uh, England suddenly lost uh, three wickets, their first three wickets for just five runs in 21 balls um, and Ben Stokes managed to get them from 155 for seven to 246 all out um, and it was a breathless day a lot happening, very few quiet periods Yeah, very few quiet periods and it all started well for, for, for England and for, for Ben Stokes you know, you talk about mentioning England had to win the toss. It was so crucial that England won the toss in this first test match to get them into the series, to get a score on the board, which would sort of keep them in the series. And that sounds negative and not the baseball wear. But unfortunately, I think when you look at the sides, I think a lot of people have got India as favourites. So England had to get the rub of the green, which I thought they got when they got obviously got the toss. I thought the Ben Duckett wicket was not not the rub of the green. It was a it was a, a decent ball from, from R. Ashwin. It went on with the arm. It clipped the top of leg stump. But it was, it was an on-field decision, which was a, an umpire's call. And I think little decisions like that have to go England's way if they want to they wanna be successful in this series. But when you're sitting there at lunchtime at 108 for three, I thought England were in a, a half-decent position. And it wasn't for the brilliance of Stokes at the end, along with Tom Hartley, to get them to 2-4-6. But at 2-4-6, I thought they were in the game, and then you know, the wheels came off from there. Darren Goff, uh, gone are the days when we criticise batsmen, however great or, 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 or up-and-coming they are for, for getting out to, to a sweep shot. But, I mean, Joe Root's one of the, the, great, the best sweepers uh, and one of the, the best batsmen in the history of the game. So for him to get out for 29, top-edging a sweep to, uh, to short fine leg, is disappointing in the old-fashioned sense because um, he's scored thousands of runs with the shot. Yep, he has, and um, I think a few of the players have got in the head, but that's going to be the shot for them to get keep that um, the strike rotating. I think Ben Duckett, we've seen he's going to do it, a mainly reverse sweep. Uh, Zach Gra Crawley is not really a big sweeper of the ball. He likes to use his feet. That was his downfall as well today. And when you look at the card, you've got quite a few batters got in and none of them really went on there, except for Stokes. I thought Stokes was brilliant there. The way he marshalled again at the end, wickets falling around him. He just stepped on the pedal, didn't he, and, and got that 70 off 88 balls, which was fantastic. But 2 four, six, we were saying it's not a bad score, and it's not. On that pitch, I think it's a decent score. Uh, they're probably batting first, they'd have wanted more like 2 seven, five, 2 80. But the way India have played, they've made it look a different game. They've, made it, they've just made the pitch look not flat but as though if you play the right shots and stay positive you can score on this pitch Goffey I'm going to ask you and Harmy and you'll both have a better idea than, than I will or, or many of our listeners why did Mark Wood only bowl two overs do you reckon um, we, I mean, even he said that he was hoping or expecting to bowl four over spells yeah, I was surprised. Um, I thought he, he, he swung it, didn't he, the first couple of overs. And I thought, you, with his pace, you've got a chance of him knocking someone over up top. Um, we saw Rohit Sharma in South Africa get knocked over by Rabada um, with pace. And if you're going to play the seamer and not Jimmy, and you're going to play somebody with express pace, you would have expected him to bowl a couple of more overs. Um, I just think they wanted to get the spinners into the game. They saw how much you were turning. You've got Stokes, who was out there for quite a bit. Root, was out there. These are senior players, Johnny Bairstow, and said it was a lot harder to probably face spin. So he got his spin into the attack, didn't he? Uh, but it didn't work for him tonight. No, it didn't. And I, when, I, when I seen Mark Wood come off after two overs, I thought, right, he's coming to this end. He's coming to the other end, because he bowled from the opposite end to where we're commentating from. And I just wondered if he was going to come and bowl from, from our end and take over from from Tom Hartley Tom Hartley you know really struggled early on and got to about four or five overs and got a little bit better And I, but I thought at the end of his fifth over fifth possibly sixth over he could have come off and Mark Wood could have had another two or three overs along with Jack Leach who was starting to get some sort of feel and some control so that was something I was sort of scratching my head at a little bit I thought 
Mark Wood would have come on then and, and, and had a go, especially with a short ball. You know, a the, the little bit of in, uneven bounce in the middle of this of this pitch. You know, two batters who aren't, you know, Shuman Gill's a little bit taller than Jassy Wild, but at the end of the day, I think 95, 94, 95 mile an hour, utilising both the middle of the pitch and then obviously the base of the stumps. I think I would have put that on for, for at least one or two overs at the end of the day when the light was starting to fade. And as for England spinners, Goffey, you said the Ben Stokes wanted to get them into the game. Um, a word on Tom Hartley's debut. Um, I, by the way, he made a very, very useful 23 um, in England's recovery. 23 from 24 balls, two fours and a six, and he, he, he looked very comfortable. Um, with the ball, though, nine overs um, at a cost of 63, and Rian Ahmed, three overs for 22. Jack Leach was the only one who had uh, was tidy. Nine overs, one for 24. But um, but Hartley, um, will he <laughs> will he will he rest easy tonight? Do you think? Um, no, he won't. Um, he, nobody listen. Whether you're a fast bowler or a spin bowler, nobody wants to go for the nobody wants to go for hundred on the card, right? And he's uh, more than halfway there. Sixty three off nine overs. I think the biggest thing, the difference is going to be between the spinners on both attacks. We know the differences. India have got high quality. Is going to be the amount of maidens and creating pressure. Spinners need to work in tandem. They need to create pressure. We bowled two overs um, of maidens um, in, in, uh, tonight when we've been bowling. That's not good enough in Indian conditions. Um, so we need to improve on that. Um, Hartley's going to have to come back. He can't afford bad balls on top of some of the good shots that India are allowed to play, by the way. Um, he bought some good deliveries in that nine overs. Same as Jack Leach, same as um, the two left armers bought some good deliveries. But unfortunately, India are used to these sort of pictures and they've got all the shots and we've got to be, we can't afford the bad balls. Steve Harmson, is building pressure by bowling maidens still a thing in Test cricket? Yeah, I think it is. I think you know, the, the old rule of the top of the stumps is still a good ball in any format of cricket. It's like saying in 2020 cricket, when somebody says top of off, uh, you know, well, top of off is still a good ball. It still makes a batter have to think do I go forward, do I go back, do I hit it on the offside, do I hit it on the leg side? And, you know, by the time he's made a decision, he might have nicked it or he might have missed it. And then you. You've got a you've got a wicket and you're out. So Jimmy Anderson, and, and, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna criticise the team selection because I thought it was bold and it was brave and you need spin bowlers in this country. Um, the one thing Jimmy Anderson would have done today would have bowled he would have bowled ten out of five overs, probably seven overs out of the what twenty three overs that we bowled. Might might not have been the fashionable right three slips in a gully, but he would have gone for fifteen runs and he would have built pressure that way. And I think by doing that, by bowling maidens and building pressure, then you can keep your men up. Ben wants Jack Leach to bowl with men up. He wants spinners to bowl with men up and really try and put pressure on that way. Asking the batters to come out their comfort zone to hit the big shot. Well, when you're going at nine and over, uh, it's really, the horse is bolted. You're, you're just you're trying to drag it back and drag it back. Uh, England, unfortunately, they haven't got a bowler out there. Un uh, apart from probably Jack Leach, you could say, is the one that's going to come in. That, that when you, they are going at five and six and seven and over from the the, the end where it's containing, you know, and the, and, and the water's gushing out the other end. You're thinking, well, how do we then build pressure to get a wicket? Because wickets come from pressure. Jack Leach got his wicket because he bowled five or six good balls, dot balls in the right area. And Robert Sharma has tried to take him down the ground because he tried to relieve pressure. And that's that that will never ever change from cricket. I know you're saying 142 years of test cricket and Ben Stokes is trying to you know reinvent the wheel and he's done brilliantly at what he's done. But there are things that will never ever change in test match cricket. If you bowl two or three maidens in a row and create the pressure, the batsman will always crack. And that, unfortunately, from a maiden's point of view, like Goffey's mentioned. I don't see many. I don't see many maiden bowlers out there for England. Goffey, just back to England's batting quickly. You mentioned already that you know it, a scorecard with twenties and thirties never looks pretty. 
Um, and there are some batsmen who might question the shots of their choice of shots that they played. Zach Crawley, 20. Ben Duckett, 35. Joe Root, as you mentioned, top edging a sweep for 29. But I would like to um, have a, a word in support of Johnny Bairstow. Not only did he look brilliantly, uh, bat brilliantly and look excellent and in touch, um, but he, he did get one that pitched leg and hit the top of the off. Well, Johnny Vesto today coming back. I say he looks a million dollars. Um, has had a hard year, tough year. A lot of things happened for him throughout his career was over. Came back, probably won't fit enough. People saw him limping when he was in the outfield. He was keeping wicket as well. Uh, but he got through the year and he's had a chance now to refresh. He's come back. He looks fantastic. He hasn't got to keep this test match with Brooke going home. Bairstow goes up to five and, and folks was him to the side. And he looked fresh today. He played some wonderful, wonderful shots. I think I put the uh, curse on him, didn't I, when I, um, just as he was playing so well, looking for a sponsor, and then he got an absolute top delivery, didn't he, um, from Axar Patel, I think it was. And, and he went for 37, but it was a fantastic innings. It was a big partnership, that, between Root and Bearstow because we'd, we had lost a few wickets, and I think we were a partnership of 61. And it was needed at the time, or else we would have been all out for 180 so for us to get to 246 yes decent still short of what they would have wanted but the way India are playing like I say England tomorrow now cannot afford one bad session or six game over and on the second morning Harmi in situations like this in years gone by uh, we'd be inclined to say England as Goffey just mentioned need to keep it really tight fight for every run put the bodies on the line give nothing away, build pressure, bold maidens, but <laughs> I just can't help thinking that that won't be Ben Stokes' team talk. Well, it might be his team talk, but he'll then look around and go, well, who the hell's going to do that for me? You know, Mark Wood bowled at 94, 95 mile an hour, and he might have to take a little bit more burden on his shoulders. You know, first thing tomorrow morning, Jack Leach is probably going to have to bowl from one end, and everybody rotate around him, so the, the the way to get wickets in this country is by you know by putting pressure on the batter and making sure that he faces as many balls as he can without him getting boundary options or twos and rotation of strike. Can you keep them down there? Because one will spit from somewhere and take the outside edge, and then all of a sudden it's difficult to get in on. That's what he's got. That's what Ben Stokes has got to be hoping to make sure that if there is an outside edge, we haven't gone all round the park where all our fielders are on the boundary or in the ring. And when it does spit, it does sort of go to a second slip or a forward short leg, a forward man silly mid off or a short leg. He doesn't, there's, there's no, there, there is a fielder there. So I think that's going to be the challenge for tomorrow morning. But when you're saying about trying to dry it up, one, yeah, you're right. Ben Stokes doesn't think like that. But two, he ain't got any bowlers on the park who got bowl like that. So, you know, that's gone out of the window. Manners, he's, to be honest though, Manners, he's got to start tomorrow with his two best bowlers, right? I mean, Absolutely. We, we, we're not in a position where we can say, oh, let's put, put Hartley on. Um, we've got to start with Woody, just for a couple again, two or three, see if that works. If not, he could even bring Rooty into it, who's got experience, and he's got to start Jack Leach at the other end. There's the two bowlers he's got to start with tomorrow, and if he doesn't work with the seam, he's got to bring and have a look at Rooty. He's had a look at the others, have a look at Rooty. Yeah, and you're right, Darren. I would, what I would say is that these three bowlers that he's got to go for the first hour tomorrow are going to be Leach, Wood and Root. You know, Brian gone for a few, Hartley went for a few. But I think tomorrow morning when, you know, the scoreboard is what it is as, at now, you know, Mark Wood and, and Jack Leach is his best too, like Goffey says. But I think if he's going to chuck the ball quickly to somebody else, I think the safest pair of hands is, uh, is, is, is the former captain, Joe Root. OK, well, thanks to the uh, wonders of modern technology and the speed of Andrew McKenna across the outfield, who's just got back from the uh, players' end of the ground, um, we can bring you news and views from inside the England camp, because he was talking to Ben Duckett. Ben Duckett, first day of the first test completed. Bit of everything in there, quite literally. Yeah, it was, um, it was quite a good day. I thought we were pretty happy there, um, getting bowled out for a year. I thought Stokes, he was superb. Um, we found it pretty tricky and I thought, to be honest, them, they played well and really positively tonight. Let's wind it right back to the start of the day. When Ben calls correctly and bat first, the whole squad must have been delighted because that really felt like a, a, an important toss to win. Yeah, I mean, you go to some places and the toss isn't huge, but I think out here it is quite big and um, 
you know, even though they've they've played well tonight, I, I can't see that pitch getting better. So, um, yeah, there's a long way to go, but yeah, we were very happy. You've touched on the pitch. You've had a closer look than most of us. What did you make of it? Good question. Um, I mean, it, it's it's spinning quite a lot on day one. You know, as we, we could have easily had three or four there tonight, and it could have been very different. Um, you know, the way the way they played at the top was quite positive and. You know that's that's fair play to them. I don't think we we necessarily thought they were going to come out and play like like that. But um, as I said, um, Stokes he got us to a, what we think was a, a above par score. Uh, people listening to that might think 240 odd is above par in, in a test match. But you've got to assess the conditions in the teams, haven't you? Yeah, I mean if they were watching, I'd like to think they'd agree. <laughs> you know, it's tough work against that attack, and um, I thought we grafted really well today. And you know, different people dug in at different times and. You know, on another day, someone goes on and get a big score. But, yeah, when the ball's spinning like that on day one, it, it can be quite tough. What's noticeable, the first few wickets went in clusters. Is that the kind of thing that you have to avoid in a situation like that? Yeah, I mean, I think that's going to happen out here. You know, I, I think that that's something that we'll have good belief in when we're bowling. You know, we could easily take three or four tomorrow morning for ten runs. It, it feels like a tricky pitch to start. You know, Shubman there, you know, we, we, we could have had him there look like a dead LBW and somehow it's bouncing over the stumps. Um, so it, it's one of those things where we got to, you know, we stick to our mantra and that's taking wickets and looking to be positive and, and hopefully that'll happen for us as well. You mentioned that you maybe didn't expect them to come out and play the way they did. How well do you think Jaiswal did play? I think he played beautifully. You know, these are home conditions and you'd expect nothing less of, of their lads to play well out here. Um, you know, even the wicket to get row hit. You know, um, they were looking quite set with those two, and then that happened. And you know, fingers crossed, if moments like that happen tomorrow, we can stick you know three or four in them. And and you never know if we can keep them to around our score, even a little bit of a lead. I think we're right in the game. Word for Tom Hartley on debut. I mean, what a game to to come in and make your debut and hit your first ball for four in Test cricket. Yeah, the way he came out and batted, I think that twenty could be crucial. If you look at the end of the game with it spinning on day one, those twenty runs could be huge. And um, yeah, to go and play with the freedom he did was was great to see. There were a couple of virtually unplayable deliveries. I mean, Johnny got one that was just off the charts. How, how do you address that as a professional player? I mean, if, if you guys can't hit those, what chance has anyone got? You just got, uh, you know, sometimes you get a good one. Um, you know, that can happen out here. It's not going to be the last ball this series that, 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 that someone gets a good, good, um, good ball to get out on. So, you know, it's a shame because he was looking really good today. Um, but I think the positive side of that is that's happened on day one, you know, before tea. So I can't imagine day two, day three, day four are going to get any easier. It's going to be fun, isn't it? I hope so. Very quickly, Goffey, get your thoughts on Steve Harbison's before we finish with uh, Chet and Narula's uh, viewpoint from India's side. But um, he's um, he was very chirpy and, and cheerful, um, given that in England finished uh, on, on the back foot. Uh, the, his view that uh, India's total was above par, Goffey, um, that's a, that can no, be a bit of a surprise. Yeah, above par, I, I had a chuckle at that. I don't, I don't think it's above par score. Batting first, 220 in a test match. I think, yes, it did turn, but there was still, you could still play the shots. It didn't stop. You, you just watched Aswell playing there, right? Those check drives out of the su supposed rough left-hander batting. He played some unbelievable stuff. You can still play. You can still hit fours. You can still hit sixes. You can still drive the ball, right? But it takes technique, and I think I think par. It's a decent score from England, but it's not par. I think par would have been two seven five. I honestly believe that. Steve Harmson. Yeah, I'm trying not to put you know dive in with two feet off a long run up after <clears throat> what Ben just said. But he, it sounded as though Ben Duckett <clears throat> is, is is talking as though India are 150 for five. You know. Sound as though you know, that England's England's bowlers, England's spin bowlers are you know R. Ashwin, Ravinder Jadeja, and, and Axar Patel. And that's the difference. You know, the difference in this this series, the difference between the two sides, is going to be the bowling unit that India possess compared to the bowling unit that that England have got. And that's the difference on this surface. This surface looks when England's bowling, and I'm not I'm not having a go here at England. I'm not having a go at the England bowlers at all. You know, we've got two lads. We've got two lads with one cap between them. Jack Lee Jump played since um, it for seven months. And you've got Mark Wood, who is a strike bowler. You know, we're talking. You're talking about a bowling attack. You know, who? You know, it's not the Indian bowling attack bowling on on these surfaces. So, from that point of view, I think we've got to be careful on 
on you know being critical but Ben Duckett saying that England got above par score I would agree with him if he had the bowlers that India have got but unfortunately he hasn't and so a par score when England are, well, England are bowling it's probably 300 plus a bit different when India are bowling Many thanks to Darren Goff, many thanks to Steve Harmison and a final word from India's perspective from Chetan Narula um, <clears throat> well I, there won't be any approach um, uh, any talk about the approach on the second morning other than more of the same chaps well, yes, absolutely. I think uh, they will, uh, first of all, try and figure out what the conditions uh, have to say on day two morning. I mean, uh, we don't expect too much uh, difference in conditions. But at the same time, uh, you know, a couple of wickets here and there, like we've discussed, they, they come in uh, bunches, don't they? Um, it just depends. Uh, will they take the attack once again to England? Because if they do, then England will be searching for answers. So that's obviously seems like the thing to do. But look, India go back to the hotel as we discussed earlier on they go back to the hotel uh, the happier side and that's a wrap from day one the first day of England's five test match tour of India from uh, the Rajiv Gandhi Stadium in Hyderabad I'm Neil Manthorpe this has been the following on pod uh, daily pod and uh, we'll have more for you from day two and the rest of the tour uh, but uh, live ball I will commentary remember it live and exclusive on TalkSport 2 from 4am UK time tomorrow well that's the news from the centre it's England who won the toss and they've decided to bat first suddenly the anticipation levels are uh, climbing by the second Siraj in once again another full one driven for four through mid on by Crawley that's a super shot that was absolutely delightful. And he's playing it again to that one. And he's hit it really well through square leg. And the England 50 is up. 10 overs and five balls to get to 50. It's a run rate of 4.8. We're going to see spin. And I think this is where the game is going to start for, for India. Spin is in around the wicket. Take it on the front pad. He's duck it. Given out by up by Gaffney. Today, John again. Edge. Kent taking it. Slip. What a good catch from Rohit Sharma. Over down the wicket comes Crawley driving to mid off. What a catch. Oh, Mohamed Suraj has taken a blinder. And England have slipped from 55 without loss to 60 for three. Short and wide and cut on the back foot by Bairstow in front. A square on the offside. Shipman Gill is chasing. He dives, but in vain. Bowled him. He's bowled him. Bairstow has been beaten. Jadija bowls. The sweep shot, it's up in the air, it's taken. That's the wicket India wanted. They got Besto, broke that partnership, and now Joe Root. Beat him, and that's out! Beat him with turn, and Ben Fox is walking back, out for four. The sixth wicket has gone down. Oh my goodness, Hartley has just launched that into the leg side, and he's underway in international cricket with a boundary four. He won't forget this. Down the wicket comes Stokes, swung this hard, there's a long on in position, and it's cleared in by 15 yards. Short, too short, to, Stokes has pulled it. Over deep backward square leg, it's gone for six more. Bumrah is on his way, he's passed umpire. Rifle, Stokes comes down the pitch, and he's beaten. He was playing defensively, it wasn't a huge swish. And England, a 246 all out. Jaiswal goes big of the very first ball. Welcome to international cricket. Tom Hartley, his very first ball is deposited deep into the stands at mid-wicket for six. Now Yashasvi Jaiswal comes down the wicket, drive through cover. India are motoring along. Always oh, pulled that one down short, hammered into the leg side by Jaiswal. And there is a man out deep on mid-wicket fence, but it's wide of him. And that will be four, and that will be 50 for Jaiswal. Rohit comes down the pitch, he's got underneath this sky. This has got to be taken. Two England fielders converge underneath it. Ben Stokes takes the catch. India lose their first. Rohit is the man to go. Always oh, pulled that one down short, hammered into the leg side by Jaiswal. And there is a man out deep on mid wicket fence, but it's wide of him. And that will be four, and that will be 50 for Jaiswal. India resume on the second morning on 119 for one.